Procopius of Caesarea has written the history of the wars which Justinian, Emperor of the Romans, waged against the barbarians of the East and of the West, relating separately the events of each one, to the end that the long course of time may not overwhelm deeds of singular importance through lack of a record, and thus abandon them to oblivion and utterly obliterate them. The memory of these events he deemed would be a great thing and most helpful to men of the present time and to future generations as well, in case time should ever again place men under a similar stress. For men who purpose to enter upon a war or are preparing themselves for any kind of struggle which may derive some benefit from a narrative of a similar situation in history. Inasmuch as this disclosure, the final result attained by men of an earlier day in a struggle of the same sort, and foreshadows, at least for those who are most prudent in planning, what outcome present events will probably have. Furthermore, he had assurance that he was especially competent to write the history of these events, if, for no other reason, because it fell to his lot, when appointed advisor to the general Belisarius, to be an eyewitness of practically all the events to be described. It was his conviction that while cleverness is appropriate to rhetoric, and inventiveness to poetry, truth alone is appropriate to history. In accordance with this principle, he has not concealed the failures of even his most intimate acquaintances, but has written down with complete accuracy everything which befell those concerned, whether it happened to be done well or ill by them. It will be evident that no more important or mightier deeds are to be found in history than those which have been enacted in these wars, provided one wishes to base his judgment on the truth. For in them, more remarkable feats have been performed than in any other wars with which we are acquainted, unless, indeed, any reader of this narrative should give the place of honour to antiquity and consider contemporary achievements unworthy to be counted remarkable. There are these, for example, who call the soldiers of the present day bowmen, while to those of the most ancient times they wish to attribute such lofty terms as hand-to-hand -hand fighters, shield men, and other names of that sort. And they think that the valour of those times has by no means survived to the present. An opinion which is at once careless and wholly remote from actual experience of these matters. For the thought has never occurred to them that as regards the Homeric bowmen who had the misfortune to be ridiculed by this term. Derived from their art, they were neither carried by horse nor protected by spear or shield. In fact, there was no protection at all for their bodies. They entered battle on foot and were compelled to conceal themselves, either singling out the shield of some comrade or seeking safety behind a tombstone or on a mound from which position they could neither save themselves in case of rout, nor fall upon a flying foe. Least of all could they participate in a decisive struggle in the open, but they always seemed to be stealing something which belonged to the men who were engaged in the struggle. And apart from this, they were so indifferent in their practice of archery that they drew the bowstring only to the breast so that the missile sent forth was naturally impotent and harmless to those who it hit. Such, it is evident, was the archery of the past. But the bowmen of the present time go into battle wearing corslets and fitted out with greaves which extend up to the knee. From the right side hang their arrows, from the other the sword, and there are some who have a spear also attached to them, and at the shoulders a sort of small shield without a grip such as to cover the region of the face and neck. They are expert horsemen, 
and are able without difficulty to direct their bows to either side while riding at full speed, and to shoot an opponent whether in pursuit or in flight. They draw the bowstring along by the forehead about opposite the right ear, thereby charging the arrow with such an impetus as to kill whoever stands in their way, shield and corslet alike, having no power to check its force. Still, there are those who take into consideration none of these things, who reverence and worship the ancient times, and give no credit to modern improvements. But no such consideration will prevent the conclusion that most great and notable deeds have been performed in these wars, and the history of them will begin at some distance back, telling of the fortunes in war of the Romans and the Medes, their reverses and their successes.